Mark. On, on yeah. <laughs> Great box. I'm disappointed yeah. it wasn't a bud. <laughs> we, uh, no, Coors Light sometimes. We are live now, guys. Oh, are hey. we? I didn't see the gray box. <laughs> I saw the gray box. I see it up in the upper left-hand awesome. corner. It says we're live. Oh, well, at least somebody's seeing something. Yeah. So we are here going over the collected compa collecting companions panel, which is your intro to harem lit in lit RPG. And with us, we have Atlas Kane, Aaron Crash, Daniel Schinhofen, and Hondo Jinx. Um, Sounds about right. Thank you, thank you guys for joining us. Yay. If you would go through and tell us a little bit about yourselves, what you're currently working on, what your stories that are out are, um, we'd be we'd love to hear a little bit more about you. Starting with TJ. Yeah. Um, so I'm TJ Reynolds or Atlas Kane. Um, kind of either one. You know, whatever you want. Um, so I kind of kicked off my harem career with uh, Chimera King. Uh, that was kind of a fun trilogy that came out last year. Um, Towers of Akalia is probably my biggest hit so far. Um, and I've, I'm working on a couple new light novel series. Um, light novels have been uh, pretty exciting for me. I like the interior art and, and sort of getting into an anime aesthetic. Uh, it's pretty nerdy. That's just kind of how I roll. Uh, and currently I'm actually working on a non-harem. That's terrible to say, but um, it's, it's such a damn big book that... <laughs> gonna take me a freaking while to get through it no no stop shaking your head Dan. um it happens there's still a love interest um but unfortunately it's only one woman it's terrible it's a sin it is <laughs> um, yeah that's all that's, that's good enough you've fallen from the noble rank sir <laughs> what about you aaron just i'm just trying to grab my head around just one love interest um <laughs> I'm uh, Aaron Crash. I'm the author of the American Dragon series, the 10 book series. That was kind of my big breakout. Uh, then I followed that up with Princesses of the Iron Bound. Um, I'm going to be working on book six, which will wrap up that series. And then uh, I have a bunch of, I have some other series that um, were super fun to write. Um, uh, and at present, I'm working on a, like a straight up lit RPG under a pen name. And then I'm also working on a Patreon exclusive story that's very matrix it's very fun kind of matrix greek myth um called night sparks so okay it's fun to yeah is that and that that's under air that's with the air crash now? yeah Aaron crash is night sparks on my okay. patreon dj daniel sorry <laughs> I don't know. I'm some guy they pulled in off the street. Uh, they said they said there'd be free booze and food. They've lied to me. I have neither booze nor food currently. It's terrible. Um, some of you might know me from Alpha World or Binding Words or Aether's Revival. Those are the three big series I've published. I have a couple of other series that are out there. Um, every single one of them has had multiple love interests. Um, the smallest love interest series I've had was Last Horizons, which was my first series. Um, that was just a triad relationship, one man, two women. Um, having dealt with uh, multiple loves in my lifetime, um, it's something that is near and dear to me, which is why when somebody says that they're going to go off on some crazy tangent and only have one love interest like uh, <clears throat> some people, I, I have to mourn for them slightly. Okay. Hondo, what can you tell us about yourself? Well, hi, I'm Hondo. Uh, I started off with Dan the Barbarian, that series, and then went to Power Mage, and then Wrangler, and now I'm all in with uh, Fight Town. And uh, Fight Town 2 just came out about three days ago. And um, that the, my newest series is really sort of a love letter to Daniel's Aether series, which blew me away over the last <laughs> year or so. And yeah, so it's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Is this the first time you've been on cam, Hondo? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm like, what the hell did I sign up for? <laughs> Welcome to awkwardness, sir. Yeah, oh man, you don't know. Uh, a dog wouldn't help. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I still I still say a photo of the dog placed in front of the camera was the better bet. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm shocked that like the microphone works and stuff. Uh I bought Weird. this thing for for Dragon, thinking I would use it. Never busted it out, and I'm like, <laughs> I do have a mic. I do have headphones. I do have, you know, and I, 
trying to figure it out. I'm just shocked that I'm here being seen talking. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Weird. Have another drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the next question then for the people that don't aren't familiar with the harem lit that could be here is what how do you guys describe harem? What would you as somebody pitching harem to a non-reader that hasn't read it before, how would you sell them on the genre? Go ahead, TJ. Oh, okay. Um, well, I don't know. I guess uh, I do think there's an underlying element of romance in it. If a lot of people think uh, harem is just basically smut, and I com I completely disagree. I think most of the books that um, really drive a good narrative, um, it's about the tension of meeting new people. It's about um, uh, meeting the woman of your dreams <laughs> again and again. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, and I and I also don't think it's ridiculous because. Um, you know, historically and, and biologically, uh, this isn't something that hasn't happened before in human society. Um, I just think it's interesting to think about the situations and the magic systems or like the apocalypses that would create this to be an imperative, right? It, it's not just always out of convenience. Um, I, I like the books that sort of have um, a need for harem that kind of makes it more interesting. So it's fun. Okay, Aaron? Uh, well, generally, I'm talking about um, my Aaron Crash books. I say it's men's adventure fiction. Um, okay. And then I say heavy on the man. Um, so it's definitely a, a male fantasy, um, like what TJ said. Um, and it's also, uh, so it's one, so, and it's really pulp, right? And I grew up reading pulp. Like, I love John Carter. Uh, Egg Rice Burroughs wrote pulp. And, um, when I when I realized this was a thing, I read I read uh, Jan Stravant's Black Friday, and I'm like, oh my god, this is a thing. And then I like discovered all the anime, and um, then I got I'm like, oh my god, this is perfect, because I it's I uh, I've written some romance under various pen names, and um, I love the romance aspect to it. Um, and so and it really is mostly the A story really is romance, and the B story is action adventure. So it's just like a perfect, it's a perfect thing. And it's a fan. It's like a, it's like, it's like the old, it's like a male fantasy, right? Is to have like all of these women in your life and they're all getting along with each other and they all adore they're all, you. And they're all getting along with each and other. And it's so great, right? It's this perfect. There's like, cause I have friends who are polyamorous and it takes a lot of talking there is a lot of relationship and a lot of talking and mm -hmm. so this kind of like says what's like the perfect situation um because there's less talking and more fighting like <laughs> killing killing dragons and what have you so. yep okay daniel what's your take um i don't try to sell harem to people honestly so i i don't know where to begin with that statement i i just i just write the stories in my head i've never uh, tried to to sell them to other people um harem though to me you have you do have what i consider the two broad parts of harem you have um like aaron has said you have uh, the the pulp um male power fantasy kind of stories and then the other side of it is you have more of the um the other side he talked about, which is the polyamorous, uh, a lot of talking uh, style. I have a tendency to fall on the lot of talking style of writing. <laughs> For anybody who's read my books, you know this. Um, there's a, there, the only thing that I keep out of my books is some of the uh, the more drama you find you find in a in a bigger relationship in actual life. There's uh, you don't get as the the fights between um, some of the love interests, you know, because somebody's not doing the dishes that week because. It's a book. You can skip some of the some of the things that would make it slightly less fun to read, and go with uh, some more fun stuff. But in those places, you normally have things that you won't find in the real world, like the noble who wants to kill you and wipe you off the face of the earth because you know you scattered his son's brains all over the field of battle. So um, there's two very different sides to harem, um, in my opinion. Um, but for me, I would say it, it it all comes down to the romance angle, but for anybody who's ever had more than one partner at a time, um, it's just a, an opening of that door 
to uh, a broader audience because a lot of people are still very much you're with one person and that's all you have and uh, we know that sometimes that leads to relationship breaks down this opens the door to the what if society was a little more embracing of such ideals i like it <clears throat> hand up yeah <clears throat> like daniel said i love your shirt daniel um <laughs> I, thank you <laughs> um yeah i i don't try to sell it to anybody other than you know literally selling it on amazon but i, I to everybody it's it's like yeah to everyone <laughs> in the world um if possible but no i just like i don't advertise uh, much at all because i it's you know when we'll it's really we try to keep other people away from our stuff because sometimes <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I feel like people who want harem are going to find it. Um, if I had to describe it to somebody, I would say it's like the harem to the fiction is the science is to science fiction. Oh, OK. Um, it needs to be an integral part. You know, if without without the harem, harem lit falls apart. So. So I heard male fantasy spoken during that description. Would so does that rule out a female author doing reverse harem at any point in time in this in this subgenre? Oh, you mean like a this, 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 this to help you out there, Nick? Because um, the, the the genre is very polarized on the Correct. idea That's, of of right. what a reverse harem <laughs> is it or is it not allowed? Correct, and um, that's why I'm asking what your guys' if, opinions are on that. If, <laughs> if 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 you talk to a lot of the genre. As soon as you get a uh, reverse harem, it's no longer harem. It is its own thing. It, it is reverse harem, which has been accepted yeah. by the vast majority of readers um, since uh, the 50s with your dime store novels. Right. Um, however, as soon as you turn that and you flip the script, now you get a lot of people who get upset with you. Mm -hmm. So um, by that same token, as soon as you bring reverse harem into a, a harem conversation, you have a lot of people who have a tendency to break out their pitch and, uh, pitchforks and torches <laughs> Correct. as well. Correct. And um, well, it's it's not very well accepted. Now, I do know some female authors who have written good harems, but if you if you go to reverse harem, you're probably going to get lynched. And uh, then that is a whole conversation of how you describe any how how you break down harem and right. so on and so forth. But so I'll pass it on to the other guys. So just just to define our terms, reverse harem is just like one chick, lots of dudes, right? Yeah. That's uh, broadly how it's been described, yes. In romance, right? Hey, okay, broad, what? Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I have a friend who does, who does really well writing reverse harem, mm -hmm. right? And right. there's all sorts of reverse harem. Like, like there there's like is. YA, like girl in high school with like three boyfriends, and it's fade to black, and it's it's clean, but it's reverse harem. I mean, not there's all, all types. Of them are fade to black. <laughs> yeah. Most of them are not. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and all the way up to like 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 hardcore like Laura K. Hamilton, right? Went reverse harem in her series, mm -hmm. basically. I mean, in her urban fantasy series. Mm -hmm. So what was the question? Like, am I gonna write reverse harem? No, no, no. There was somebody who asked, would any of you write reverse harem in the in the comment chat? Oh, no. I don't think I, any I, of you would actually go into my, that. I don't think I could. Nor would it be done anything. well, in my opinion, if if a male tried to do that. Yeah, I don't think I could. Right, but we would, we would collect a few one stars. We absolutely yeah, more, like, more, more than a few, sir. Yeah, so we are getting we are getting more female writers in the game lit and lit RPG genre. Mm -hmm. sure. So, do would could you see the harem genre subgenre opening up to allow reverse harem? Uh, I, I would I I would see different. reverse harem being in the genre, but I don't see it as being part of the harem. Yeah. Part okay. Of the genre. Yep, nope. Like women, like like Missy Vixen and Eden Red, like write great Max, harem. Yeah. Right? Max, yeah. Max yeah. Whitaker. Yep. Oh, yeah, is Max, Max Whitaker a good, uh... female? Yeah. Really? Max is a she. <laughs> yep. I didn't know. Oh, and, maybe, and I, maybe I just opened my mouth. I, I think you know. Yeah, she is. But um, <laughs> I thought it was public knowledge. Oh, it probably is. I'm just clueless. <laughs> pitchfork time. The real pitchfork <laughs> is where like. <laughs> Like the poly, like in harem, there is the expectation that the women are only going to be with that guy. So that where you get into trouble, where people just really get upset, is where one of the right. women, like I had one of the women in American Dragons who was like not convinced. Right, her character arc was at the beginning she wasn't convinced to join Stephen in his escort, right, and so she was looking at cute guys, and I got one starred for that. But by the end, 
it's like no she is fully on and i think that's what the expectation is okay i'll um, tell you i'll tell you what i think we have the coolest readers in the world i really do they're so supportive and they just love what we do but man they know what they like and what they don't yeah, like that's right. <laughs> right. yeah 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 I'm not going to go killing any of my girls, you know. There's the, there's the, <laughs> yeah, you're, it's hard to do that. Yeah. No, it's not. Jay, you had something. <laughs> yeah, there's a weird uh, oil and water relationship with the male and female readers that are interested in multiple partner romances, right. and I, I do think it's a bit strange. But part of it might stem from Daniel was talking about reverse harem has pretty much been accepted for decades now. Um, it's just kind of part of part of part of course. Um, most people don't even call it that. They just call, put it under paranormal romance. Um, and so I think it's almost, it would be a bit of an ask um, having our smaller pond, except um, <laughs> reverse harem and when, when really they've got like 10 times the readers or more. Um, so I would, I wish we could, you know, open up a little bit on the borders, but I, it's the readership that always dictates these things, not the authors. We're just uh, hoping to avoid baskets of one stars. <laughs> Fair. Uh, bouquets right so then the next question is drawn up back a little bit to the the broader genre of lit rpg and gaming systems what challenges are unique to writing the lit rpg gaming system when also including a harem in that aspect because it is two very distinct things that you have to include to hit both of your reader bases correct you know the game lit, lit rpg fans are looking for a specific key elements and then the harem group is looking for obviously a harem what what difficulties do you guys find in writing those together i i mean i'll jump in um, Go ahead. i don't i don't really see the the two of them being together as creating any extra trouble um you know you've you got your harem and hopefully if you're writing harem you love to write harem and then with the lit RPG, it really depends on how you come down. You know, I, I do game lit. I do lighter lit RPG. Um, and you know, so it's it's not difficult. But if I was doing something more intense on the lit RPG side, um, perhaps that could also affect the harem. Um, I'll let the other guys talk to that. But to me, they're two separate, two separate pieces. I'll jump in there. Um, you did make a good point with uh, you said you write harem or uh, gamelet, right? Right, Hondo. That's that's what I'd say. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll one star me for saying I write the RPG. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I, I do think I think uh, in general the relationship is most uh, harems tend to be a little bit lighter on the lit RPG elements because uh, the readership wants the harem to be in and the dialogue and the the tension to be pretty much in the forefront rather than pages of you know uh, trash items. You know, like I picked up this, 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 and then plus to constitution. Um, the only other thing that I'd like to add is I, I like it when, again, if you can get the two elements to play. So some people do the dual cultivation. <laughs> so yep. like literally sex will power you up or something. Um, that's a bit on the nose for me, but I like when somehow there's a connection between um, ascension and the harem itself. And I also like it when the girls ascend too. Um, I've gotten crap on that where they're like, well, your MC is not much stronger at all. And I'm like, you're right. They're all bad as fuck. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't see the problem. He's got a whole team of killers. Um, but everyone's got their own preferences on how to level up the, the girls as well as right. the gun. So. I think, I think I, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to plug you, Hondo. I think I was, what you I did was going to plug Town, Daniel. So yeah, you go uh, ahead. I, <laughs> I think what you did in Fight Town is this perfect marriage. I mean, Fight Town is oh, genius, thanks. right? I mean, Fight Town is just top deck. Um, but way you like, because you have to have chapters, right? I mean, you only have so many words to put on yeah. a page, <laughs> so you have to have you have to have chapters of game lit and chapters of romance, and right. Yeah. And I think what you did in Fight Town, I haven't read the second one yet. Just came out. It's it's burning a hole in my kindle but i think what you did in the first one is because what i did in my books is just keep it like have the progression and then have the it's more game lit it would be harder to write a lit rpg a right. crunchy lit rpg harem it would be like twice as long so because you would have to have chapters of the crunchy lit rpg and then the chapters of the romance yeah i mean really that that um approach thank you by the way but that that approach really 
I again have to give credit to Daniel because I know that that entered my head because of Apocalypse Gates. You know, when he, in Apocalypse Gates, he's got the store, and um, that just always struck me as a fun element. And um, I've seen other people mess with things like that, but that that's where it entered my head. Um, and it does does help to make it like RPG, but not 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 have it on every page. Um, the I, two of them I was going together. To I, I, oh, go ahead, Hondo. Go ahead, Hondo. Uh, I said I was going to talk. Um, Go ahead. I was going to plug. I was going to plug Daniel's uh, when when TJ was talking about how you know you power up the females and the females are also badasses and everything. I agree completely. But Daniel does something great with Dungeon Walkers with Paulie, the shirt he's wearing now, and just the way that that when he gets perk when when Stern gets perks instead of pouring them all onto himself. I don't want to spoil it here, but he he's not afraid to share the power and on a conscious level. It's really it's really cool. Um, and you know, it does, I'm not gonna say anymore, but yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> the two elements of lit RPG and harem can coexist. Um, yeah. um, it being a challenge is more, if you're trying to concisely tell a story, if you're, if you're really trying to break it down into like a, just a trilogy, like, uh, there's, there's a harem author that is well known out there <laughs> who does so he's not here. Um, but I would struggle with that. Of course I would struggle with just the trilogy. So you can get them to coexist. Um, I've done so in a couple of different books, uh, um, Alpha World and Apocalypse Gates. Um, both of those are lit RPG. They have stats, they have levels, they have mechanics that are defined. Um, and there is, of course, harem. Now, both of those stories were slow burn harems. They don't end up with multiple partners in the first and second books. Um, that is also something to consider when you're um, weaving two different elements together. Um, and I think it's always going to come down to is which one is most important to you as the, as the author. Um, I have a tendency to fall more on the um, personal story side of things, the romance side of things, than crunching numbers, as uh, I think most people can attest to. Um, but yeah, you can blend them and you can do it well. Um, so th I don't I don't see where there's there's really a problem with doing so. Just a matter of how much effort you want to put in, because any lit RPG that has crunchy numbers, you better be on top of your game. Because if you're not, I guarantee you, you will you will be told by many many people that your stat numbers or your increases do not add up. It's very true. Yeah. So I mean, that kind of plays into then what style of Harem writer, are you? Are you? Uh, story drives the harem, or harem drives the story. Story drives the harem. Story is all. Story should always come first. Um, if you're if you're just putting another woman in there to to increase the harem for whatever reason, in my opinion, you're doing it wrong. Now that is that is my opinion. There are other books where the harem drives the story, and those still sell well. But for me, it'll always be the story that that takes precedence over anything else. Mm -hmm. And I have gotten. Um, some flack for the, the size of harems in some series. And it, that's the way the story goes. I'm not going to try to curtail it or add to it just because, you know, it's a, not a, it's not a number that people are happy with. Yeah. Aaron. Uh, yeah. I mean, story drives. I mean, story. I, I plot out my books using like the save the cat, okay. uh, plotting. So I plot out my stories. Um, but most of the time, so, and when I, American Dragons is very action oriented. They're on a quest, right? And I have a lot of like quest books. Um, whereas Princess of the Ironbound, I really put the romance before. So it's more slice of life, slower, getting to know, like, you know, um, and it has more dynamic. But I, 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 man, you guys who do slow burn, I get, I get, I get, I get impatient. <laughs> You heard it first here, guys. Aaron's Aaron's into quick and fast, man. Well, sometimes. <laughs> TJ, you promised not to spill his secrets. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else. Um, <laughs> I'm keeping it kind of clean. I haven't had three beers yet. <laughs> we were Hondo, told we keep didn't drinking need to keep it clean. <laughs> Hondo's almost on number two. Hurry up, man. What's going on? I'm pacing myself. Hey, TJ, what do you think of that? What, what's your answer to that question? Um, yeah, I think, I think that's a cool question only cause you can kind of, 
it depends on how you want to answer it. You can almost say the same thing in a different way. But this, it, the story is the first in everything because that's what books are. Um, but the story is about a harem. So it's a harem story first. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, so it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of a I'm a plotter, but then like I usually spend a week, you know, kind of making the story and world building and everything, and then I start writing, and then of course the outline is shattered, and I have to re-outline like seven times as I'm writing because the story takes its own path occasionally. And and Daniel said something where he's like, I'm not going to modify the number of people in the story because the story there's an organic feel. If, if an author is not doing something because their gut tells them, then they're they're not doing, I don't think they're doing their job. Um, there's a truth to story, right? Which sounds really hippie or whatever, but it's true. Sometimes you're, you even read your favorite author and you read something and you're like, that was bullshit. I'm going to just pretend that didn't happen because they fucked up. You can feel it sometimes. <laughs> okay, you guys remember the Dark Tower series? <laughs> that, that, yeah. that DJ is called plot driving story, not story driving plot. Correct. Exactly, exactly. But you remember The Dark Tower with Stephen King, right? Yeah, I yeah. haven't read it. Yeah, I haven't read it. I've read a lot of him, but I haven't read Dark Tower. There's a part where he comes in and he meets uh, Roland Deschain, uh as as himself, and he looked like himself. And I literally decided at that point that Stephen King was wrong. I'm sorry, but Roland, the last gunslinger, does not look like Stephen King. He's a fucking badass. Stephen King. No, you know but saying? he's from the... He He's from no. the trade paperbacks. No. It was the art that made him look like Stephen King. Oh, I gosh. thought that was cool as fuck. I, hate it. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. And especially <laughs> since, like, I'm a huge Stephen King fan. But anyway, I am this... too. I love his writing. I just don't love his face on Roland Deschamps. Yeah, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> and the fact that that's his seminal work, right? I mean, the Stephen King, basically, <laughs> all of it is Dark Tower, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's the yeah. Stephen King universe is Dark Tower. Yeah. So, I love yeah. this movie, but we can disagree on that point. Dude, book four, <laughs> book four killed me. That's the problem. Book four, he didn't know what to do, so he did a f million page flashback, and I'm like, yeah, don't care, <laughs> don't yep. care, keep going. If and any line from this panel is going to echo through the internet, it's it's going to be TJ saying, "Oh yeah, I love his stuff, but I don't like his face." <laughs> 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 he's so big that he'll never notice me that's, that's like the harem thing. writer doesn't like stephen king's face <laughs> <laughs> wait that, that, that's that. fine because he'll get crucified and that's, then all of our works will go up no so that's fine. good <laughs> don't stop <laughs> it. tj's gonna totally sell Keep looks. going yeah. <laughs> yeah fuck stephen king <laughs> <laughs> daniel we're still alive um, <laughs> yeah i'm switzerland <laughs> Yeah, as far as the whole story, story harem thing, yeah, the story comes first, but I think that it is a sort of a trick question in the end because it is because um, you know, character not again, not no. to sound all funny, but character is story, and every time something happens in the story, we're revealing something about our characters. Um, and you know, they are if if I have to give one piece of advice to writers, I'll say keep your characters in the driver's seat because their their choices should impact the plot right so yes story first but also you, you shouldn't really be able to neatly untangle the the characters in the plot because they're so they're so integrally and in, in, you know combined that makes sense i just remembered i was on camera and i sat back and stopped talking <laughs> <laughs> um so one of the other hot debated topics in the genre is fade to black or explicit oh. which which do you prefer and why Go ahead, Daniel. Oh, fine. Just throw me under the bus first, Nick. Okay, I appreciate that. You've I really appreciate that. You've, I know you've <laughs> you're fired. Both, so I know. <laughs> I know you've written both, so I know you can handle the question. Um, it really depends on the series. Um, personally, um, it to me it comes down to is there is there a character moment in in that scene when mm -hmm. when yeah. when two people are naked in front of each other and about to engage in sexual acts normally there's emotion involved if there's not then it's normally a business transaction let's call it what it is um but it comes down to how how much that moment means to one the other and or both um writing writing fade to black means you have to really hit those notes um a little harder outside of those scenes um if you have someone who is 
uh, very nervous about their looks or uh, very self-conscious because of something that's happened in their past. It gets a lot easier to portray those moments of connection during those intimate moments because you are never <laughs> you're never as naked as you are when you're naked in front of somebody. You're 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 more exposed. I hate this. This you can't get away from the bad puns in this. <laughs> you're more exposed when you're when you're in those moments. Um, uh, so it's e it's easier to convey those moments, but it's also then you also don't want to detract from the the acts themselves because life is life. People are don't I don't care who you are. Your mom and dad had sex. You're here, so. To hide sex behind a, a, a curtain is to, for me, is is to deny part of what everyone experiences in life. Mm -hmm. um, but for some series, um, it's either a business decision. Hey, I want to read. I want to reach a, a wider audience, so let's uh, pull the curtain on these scenes. Or it's uh, I don't feel comfortable because maybe the characters are right on that edge of age where you don't want to get in trouble with certain people. So um, having written both, um, I prefer, will always prefer normally explicit, um, just because I think the act is something that brings uh, people closer together. Makes sense. So before we move to Aaron, uh, one of the Facebook users said, Crash, I've read Barbarian Princess. You better not lie on this question. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> so go ahead, Aaron. Man, okay. <laughs> I, I have a lot. <laughs> So when I so, so, so I read Stan Stravant, and and he does like he does explicit, but it's pretty tame, right? He's not like using generally when you're there's the three C words, and he steered clear of the three C words, um, and uh, and so I was like I didn't know, so I wrote the American Dragons. I wrote these tame sex scenes, and you know, and they drove me crazy because I'm I mean I've read a lot of erotica and a lot of romance and. I was just like, this is, this is, I, I called it Skinamax sex scenes. Cause right. <laughs> like this the old Skinamax. And I was like, yep. I'm not doing that again. Then I read power mage and I'm like, that was really good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I could. And then I read Sibelius's, um, uh, yeah. Celestine Chronicles. He's and, good. uh, and I was like, Oh, <laughs> that, that the Euralia sex scene at the end of the mask of the temple. It's so good. Yes. But then I'm like, well, if he can do all that, right. I'm, I, I, I am unfettered and I'm going to write the sex <laughs> scenes, how I like to write them. <laughs> so I'm, I've been writing like my whole life. And so I generally write what I like to write and I like to write explicit sex scenes using the three seats. So uh, I'm not going to write fade to black harem anymore. It's going to be super, super explicit sex scenes. I just can't uh, do it. And like and like in Nights in Night Sparks, I was writing erotic on the side, but it wasn't harem, it was something else. And uh I was like, Well, this is stupid, Aaron. You, you, dude, you're writing words that you're not putting like and so then I'm like, Okay, I'm gonna write like more erotica, you know, kind of for my <laughs> Patreon. What's that? We have somebody asking about, about the three C's, C's there, C's. Aaron. Three Explain, C's. Aaron. You mean cotton candy and, and crushes, right? I can say I'm right. You yeah. asked, we were told all cum, we were told right? everything is fair tonight. We were told everything is fair tonight. And so. come. That's the truth. <laughs> so I learned something new today. Well, yeah. And you and and if yeah. you right, I don't I didn't use those where I didn't even mention common American dragons. So then I'm like, so yeah, barbarian and the barbarian outcast book, it gets dirtier every book. So um, and that's what I like to write. So, and I like, but I like to put that in the pulp. I like to write in the, in the, in the pulp fiction, right? I think it's this, because mm. now it's kind of this in extreme. Now you just can't have the bug eyed monster, right? We've already seen the bug green bug eyed monster. And, but now, and I think that's, I think it's a good marriage. So. Okay. TJ. Oh yeah. Um, so this is definitely an interesting one. Um, I do get the idea that, it depends on the the series, it depends on the tone, what you're going for. Powers of Vicalia is is pretty much close to fade uh, fade to black. Some people get really upset because there's not a bunch more fucking, but it's just kind of like a sweet, uh, lighthearted romance. And then I've got Savage Ascension and Chimera King, where I loaded, <laughs> I dropped the three C's pretty heavy. Um, uh, yeah, I bounced around a little bit because. 
it's funny if you if you read your own reviews and react to them too directly you'll just make a mistake anyway um because you can't please everyone um i i responded to chimera king some people are for some reason in this genre don't like the word pussy they they, they think oh ugh. and i'm like really like he's banging four people and at the same time and pussies you've got it. that i've gotten it in reviews um even even the word bitch um like uh, he even said it in, in a funny way. He's like, "You sweet little bitch," you know. And it was just like a joke. And and it was like, "How dare he disrespect her?" And I'm like, "Wait, I I get that one more." He wasn't he? Wasn't but uh, I think it depends on where you're from, your dialect. Like in California, oh, sure. you, can, you can call someone, you know, "Hey, motherfucker, how's it going?" And it doesn't really matter. Um, but then yeah, and then Savage Ascension was probably more like the barbarian outcast. Uh, in fact. Unfortunately, they have a similar premise, and I did not mean to do that, Aaron. <laughs> but, oh, that's right. Didn't you reach out to me and say, hey, man? I, yeah, I'm not. I don't care. I it's all ask it. Someone, someone was like, hey, dude, did you did you read that? And I was like, no, I love the covers, but I, I haven't read it yet. Um, but yeah, that one I just decided to have as much fun as possible. And it's fun because some people loved it. And then other people think, like, oh, that looked like it was an adult film, and it was ridiculous. And I'm like, yeah, it was a lot of fun to write. But also every single scene is emotional, impacts the story. Um, that one involved uh, childbirth as a main theme because infertility oh, sure. was part of the world. Uh, so I think it was all necessary. It was awesome. I, I enjoyed that a lot. So I think it just depends on where you're at with the story and the series and the tone. It would be really weird to write um, to write a really explicit long scene in Towers of Akalia. People would be pretty offended and thrown off. Yeah. Um, and also if you're in a, if you're in a book, and the pacing wrong you shouldn't have a sex scene there you should fade to black if the story needs to move along at a certain pace and then you have your sex scene later when it's the right time so sometimes i'll you know what i mean you, you cut off short in the middle of one scene and then later in the book you're like here we go guys there you go have your have your biscuit now i guess <laughs> that's not that's not one of the three c's tj are you sure you want to stay with biscuits? <laughs> <laughs> i knew something was coming <laughs> But I'm like, did I, did I say biscuit? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so Hondo? Yeah, I mean, I've never done fade to back, black. Um, I've done fade to back. Fade but to I, haven't, back. <laughs> fade, no, I haven't actually, I haven't done fade to back. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, have, I have gone up and down the scale in terms of how explicit and um yeah, I, I like both and both have their place. Um, as a reader, I like both. And, you know, right now I'm in Fight Town and that one's far less explicit and I'm finding that I'm really enjoying it um, just because it kind of puts more focus on the moments that are more explicit. And, um, yeah, I, I, but I, I really think that it, it that these guys have already covered all the important ground. I mean, it depends on the story. It depends on the, on the tone. And also... I think that it it is the the uh, framework to it. Daniel spoke to this, but it's the emotional framework that fits around the moment, and it's a lot like a fight scene, actually. Like yeah. it's because you know, fight scenes if they just come out of nowhere and it's a bunch of technique and it's like pa pa pa, and then and I'll, it's like okay, so what? But if the, if a fight means something, and if you if you get readers into uh, the main character's point of view and they really, they know what's at stake, not just you know, winning, losing, but also emotionally and psychologically. Um, then the fight's way more ex exciting. In the same way with sex. I mean, if if it really matters to the characters, um, and they're they're balancing all the things because it's not a fight, and it you know, but both characters might be aware that it changes things for everyone. So it it's pretty dynamic, and it can be pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, explicit versus, versus fade to black. I, I think it, it, both have a place. I, I just want to point out that w with the idea of explicit and fade to black, because Aaron touched on it earlier, there is a matter of how much explicit you're going for. There's, it, they, they can run the gambit from PG 13 to R to, uh, Skinamax, as he says, or soft porn, all the way through triple X. So it's a, it's a it's a it's a matter of wh where the author feels comfortable. So, so one of the other hot button topics is for audiobooks. 
Single narrator or dual narrator? Single. I have Andy. I'm perfectly happy. Come on. <laughs> I knew that was your answer. But the genre as a whole is kind of leaning towards dual narration, correct? Yes. Well, I, yeah, but I mean, I had Andy for 10 books and I was 100% happy. She's awesome, but she's a rare talent. I mean, she's right. able to bring full life to male and female characters and differentiate her characters so much that you will never question anything. I mean, she is amazing. Um, but yeah, and overall, sure. The genre is moving toward dual narration. Yeah, and, and this is a question for Daniel and Hondo, <laughs> because me and Aaron can't book Andy. <laughs> to, to be fair, right. I can't book Andy for all of my books either. So, but, Same. But you know, and, I'm, and I'm happy with Stephanie Savannah. I'm a bit, I'm a fan. She's great. Yeah. She does good so, work. Yeah. Her Tess, I mean, they do, they yeah, do good work. Great. Tess Irondale. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they, they do good work. There, there are there are really really talented narrators. Um, I, I would I would say that yes, I I think a lot of the genre is moving to to dual narration. Outside of that, though, I will say the genre is probably heavy female narrator. Yes, uh, so yeah, that's gonna my, be my next no. question. So if I had to pick single narrator, would it be male or female? Female. Female. Well, female I, hands I think down most, is kind of what I, I think would most of the genre will tell you that if there's going to be sexy times, they'd rather have it whispered in their ear by a sexy woman instead of <laughs> hey, and then he decided to take yeah. off his shirt. <laughs> yeah, my dumbass. <laughs> my dumbass. I um, <laughs> I was. I'm an audiophile. I love audiobooks. And Andy did Power Mage, and it tore her voice up. And she said, "Hey, I just don't think I can do Braddock for the Wrangler books." And um, so I'm scrambling around and then uh, I, so I was looking for the best narrator who could do a deep gravelly voice. I should have done dual, but yeah. Hey, and I, and I grabbed this guy, Adam gold and he's fantastic. I mean, dude is awesome, but he's also male. And um, yeah. So, I, yeah. So in book three, my dumbass added Amber Lee Connors and she's great. And it really, yeah. but I wish I had added her in the beginning. Um, because people just are not open to dual male narrator because right. he is fantastic, but, and I get it, but you know, all I had to do is just, you know, take a punch to the face to learn that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, duel's good. I, as a, as a listener, I have, have never really gotten into duel, you know, until recently when I realized it professionally that it was important. Um, but I always just, listen to you know solo narrators um and it's different We're choosing your narrator and listening to audiobooks are not exactly the same job yep. <laughs> yeah do you have anything to add tj um uh we, we've got a lot of great narrators i really like them uh christian gilliland and, and hazel cohen they're doing some good stuff there i like daniel uh wisniewski and, and rebecca woods mm -hmm. um jessica three there's we, we're basically, I think we're really lucky. Um, it is getting a little bit crowded with all the audiobook demands. <laughs> so people are Christ booking up quicker and quicker. Christopher um, Boucher is good. Yep. Yeah. But I, I do actually really like, um, I really like single uh, solo female. Um, I got Aaron Bateman on Who Let a Demon Lord into the Mage Tower. She really hit the tone of that book because it was kind of cutesy and fun. Um, so it just depends. But I get, uh, <laughs> it gets cringe when, when a man does the woman part specifically for me, especially when they get breathy and then you're like, Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. That's, that's a lot to, to swallow. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, you know, it, it's sometimes uh, I hope readers and listeners can understand that we are not masters and we just fucking work really hard. Like it's funny who's gotten shit about cover art when, okay. So they're like, uh, technically um, a, bow, a bow is not held in that way. And I'm like, well, neat, but um, I'm happy that they got the hair color right. And this was the third attempt and the first two were shit. And, it, it, you know, it can be really tough. Mm -hmm. um, you can only win so many battles. And then if you get a good art, uh, art like a cover artist, you just want to marry them. But <laughs> readers expect such. Uh, it's interesting. I'm like, oh, OK, yeah, yeah. that's this all perfect. <laughs> So staying yeah. a little bit on the audiobook trend, do you write with audio in mind after, like, did you start originally writing with audio in mind and have you switched to writing with audio in mind when audio is such a large portion of the sales for, for the genres or has that, has that changed at all? How you go about your writing process? I do think I, about it. 
I mean, I, it's just, it's, I think it's a good idea to have lots of conversation, in there. but I, I do think about how it sounds out loud. Um, because all you have to do is listen to one of your books and have it sound really bad to <laughs> start thinking you don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, that's great, huh? <laughs> How about you, TJ? Um, he just mentioned something interesting there. So I, I did a turtle online with, uh, I got Andrea for that, which was just a fluke, and I'm so grateful. Um, but she has a, a bit of a, a slower and a more performative way of reading. And uh, I, it was like my first series. So I was in that, let me put shiny words sometimes here that probably don't need to be there. And then Andy did her best job, but then I'm listening to it and I'm like, yeah, you should have fucking cut down your prose, man. Jesus. It just, <laughs> you know what I mean? When you hear it and I'm like, yeah, that that's that's right. Borderline pro purple prose right there. So my next attempt was how can I streamline this a little bit more and make it just sound more natural? Um, the only other thing I consider with audio is is book length uh the longer the better uh, on audio but with light novels that doesn't that doesn't really do much anyway so right i uh, i i switched to third person pov so i did one series with a first person male narrator and it's and it wasn't it and it was kind of like it wasn't like fully 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 explicit and then after that i'm like no so I've, I've, I've just done third POV. The, the voice count though, really. So a lot of times I listen to my books and I'm like, oh my God, I'm a terrible writer. And, but then the narrator like elevates it. Like James Patrick Cronin, Cronin and what he did with the American Dragons. I'm like, wow, that's really good. And I was like, he's really good. So. We, we just got a nice comment in um, author masturbation being overly wordy. That one, yeah. <laughs> that's, like that's, that's, that. that's purple prose. Yeah, it, purple it, pros. I had sometimes, some. sometimes it's a rookie mistake when an author is having a lot of fun and they haven't learned that lesson the hard way yet. It's it's the such hard a hard way. It's, it's an it's a new author thing. So many people are like, "Hey, look at this massive word." And I'm like, "That doesn't belong in a book." But cool. Uh, <laughs> massive, hard, and purple. <laughs> Hold on, Hondo. I wasn't going to touch it, but I know you will. <laughs> touch it. You want to touch it? <laughs> oh man. So, and I know Daniel's Daniel has written specific lines to tongue tie Andy in some of his books. So, have not you true, changed sir. have not you true, changed sir. how you write? Not true, sir. Those those are lies and I will I will I will call them lies at the end. I just smash my face into a keyboard and words come out, okay? I do not go out of my way to make things difficult. And my editors will tell you that it actually is my face smashing into the keyboard when they try to decipher it. <laughs> One of my editors is disagreeing with me, but no, I don't. I don't. I don't go out of my way to try to put uh, words in or pull words out. I don't okay. uh, go out of my way to make things difficult for Andy. I would rather her have a much easier time and want to continue to work with me than to make things difficult and have her go. You know what, Shinhoff, and I'm really tired of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> so. It makes perfect sense. Uh, one of the questions we had from Facebook users was, what is your, what is the favorite moment you had while writing a harem novel? We'll start with Hondo on that one. Oh, um, actually it's probably either I've got a bad memory or this is the real answer. I think it was in my last book. Um, there's a, there's a part where I don't, I don't exactly. want to say too much. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's a part where uh, where Freddie needs to get extra strength and she finds it. Yeah. Perfect. Fucking so. bawling on a plane reading that scene. <laughs> fucking <laughs> like 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 fucking nice. ball and I can't like have a napkin and bullshit like right. And so I have like this little shredded Kleenex and I'm like wiping and it's COVID, right? So I'm just like <laughs> fucking <laughs> Honda, was that was that book one that yeah. scene or or book two that scene that you're talking about? I was actually thinking of I was actually thinking of book two. Um, yeah, oh, book two. I know the scene, yeah. I know yeah. the scene you're talking about. Not yeah, book you, one. you know what I'm talking about. Uh, what's that? Not book what's, one. No, actually, it's in book two. Oh. Um, but I but I love that scene you're talking about in in uh, book one. It was definitely my favorite in book one, and probably my favorite to that point of anything I had written. And then in book two, there's a scene where without saying too much freddie once again really just needs to find power she needs to go that last that last yeah. round 
Wow. I, I thought for sure Honda was going to say it was that scene in uh, Power Mage where he... Oh, wait. I probably shouldn't right. go into too many details. <laughs> <laughs> we, were told, we were told all is fair, so... <laughs> no, no. I, I, I can't say some words. <laughs> okay, Daniel. So what's your favorite part? Favorite thing you've done while writing Paramount? Favorite favorite, favorite scene from, from one novel? Oh, uh, well... Lot. Gee... Let, hang on while I dig through my back <laughs> catalog and pick one scene out of all of them. Um, I can't. I I can't pick one scene as a, as a favorite over any of the rest of them. Uh, fun scenes though. Yeah. Um, Lux voice. Uh, Sigmund hats. Just just a great character to write. He's 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 a hatter who's of course yeah has hatter disease or as we know it mercury poisoning, and he's he's losing his mind. The character is just a lot of fun because he's allowed to be insane. I, I, th I think that's fun. Finding those characters who can be different and have a reason for being different and the uh, society not really balking too much because they understand um, it is, is, is a fun thing. So, so, so the, the, the Hatter, it was a lot of fun just because he gets to really embrace what he loves, which is hats. And it, it's just a scene where you get a laugh because a, a gnome who is dancing jigs and chanting about hats is just funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aaron? Man, uh, American Dragons 10 has this wedding scene uh, that, and I write, well, before COVID, I wrote in all the coffee shops all the time. So I was at a Starbucks writing the, and, and American Dragons 10, I knew it was going to be the last book. So at the very end, and it was a great fun book to write because it was all just day you mall. The whole thing is really a slow. I introduce you know a villain, but it's really just a, a day you mall of the whole series, just a resolution and and it's just the family and and everything. And there's a scene at the end that was um that so I'm at I'm at a I'm writing the wedding scene and I'm crying, and people are looking at me and saying what's wrong <laughs> with that guy, um and then in uh Barbar in the uh, fourth barbarian book the fourth book of the princess of the iron Mountain series barbarian gladiator there was a character i have a mermaid named charibda or ribby rib rib and uh i was i was i knew the it was going to be her pov character and i was really dreading writing her because she was just kind of like i was like i was like it's it's she's not gonna be any fun to write but then i started writing her and it was like just the words poured out it was like that perfect moment of like writing when everything you hit that wave and like the words come and you're like, and she's just this tragic figure. So she was such a nightmare in the first couple of books where she appeared. But then I real I didn't really know her backstory until she kind of told it to me. And it was just this feeling of channeling that. So. Rib rib. <laughs> <laughs> TJ. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about a specific thing, uh, scene, but I, I do like one of the things that really gets me going is, is righteous retribution in some way, whether it's, um, one of the harem girls or the main character who is just sort of pushed and pushed. And, um, I've got one in, in towers where this guy's being a total dick and it's, it's not really Rin's place or good timing to put him in his spot, but he sort of secures, um, he ends up securing this uh, indentured contract from this person, and um, wins wins one of the number th the third girl's freedom, right? Uh, and then the guy pushes a little bit too far, and it's the deal's been done and everything's over, and he gets personal, not about himself, but about one of the girls, and so he just <laughs> destroys the guy's face and and knocks him down, and then gives him a good quick warning that it could be his life next time. And that sort of shit gives me the goosebumps when, because you wish you could see it in real life. The mm -hmm. guy's just being a total piece of shit. And, and to just have like a few things on their face broken in a matter of three seconds and then just, just watch it, man. Um, and, and I'm not afraid to have the women do that themselves too, because I think that's more appropriate in certain situations. Um, and it's pretty awesome to watch. I'm like, oh man, my my girl number one just beat the shit out of some guy. <laughs> Why? Because because he was fucking with girl number three, and I'm like, all right, that was that was epic. Yeah, uh, those always they're fun to write. So another another question on the harem itself: Is the harem a tool? Should the harem be a toolbox for the main character, or should they be their own characters 
and have their own personalities and effectively their own powers in the book. <laughs> Hang on, is that a serious question? Or are you just yeah. fucking with us? It's, <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Uh, <clears throat> they should be characters. That's yeah. Yep. We we all uh, agree. <laughs> fair enough. We already have a tool here. I'm gonna say his name is Nick. <laughs> 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 um we we did hit our five minute warning so we're gonna we'll have one more question that was just asked in chat and then we'll go into the into the goodbyes and i think it continues over in discord uh if people want to come over and talk to the the authors in discord there they'll be sitting in discord chatting for a little while the last question is where do you get your ideas from uh, <laughs> life life <laughs> I've I've stated before. I'll state it again. I've I've had relationships right. with multiple women at the same time. Life is easy. the The rest of the story, the framework of of different settings, that's just the stories in my head. So, yeah, uh, you guys hear that cheesy quote? I don't know how it goes. It's something like, "If you've lived a certain like a day of life, then you have enough material to write a book for the rest of your life." Oh. It, that, that's how it is. If you've if you've lived as a person, you've got enough. Um, to write a book it just after that it depends on if you really have the talent for narrative or whatever um but yeah like uh i get some good ideas um usually it's not the idea itself it's like working out the problems of a plot or you're like oh shit well i know that this is the ending but how do i get there and then you'll go on a walk or take a shit or something and then you're like <laughs> no way <laughs> aaron aaron looks surprised listen aaron if you haven't shit while trying to plot out a book, you need. <laughs> I, I just have to ask: Does that make your plot shitty? <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's a good author because he's not full of crap. Oh. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that. Uh, you got anything, Aaron? No, man, I, I think in stories. So everything is a story, right? Um, right. Like there was a question that somebody asked about boss build and I was watching the old Blade Runner movie and I'm like, what if, right? What if a guy could build his own women, right? What would that be like? And I wanted to do a monster girl, even though Sibelius, you know, told me not to. Um, <laughs> he's like, don't you monster girls? And I'm like, I want to do monster girls. So I did, yeah, so I did boss build. Um, and um, yeah, it was super fun. That was a fun book to write. But yeah, I just think as I have, I will die like Stephen King. Who I will die, at telling the Grim Reaper, wait one. I just want to write one, one more story, yeah. right? I yeah. just want to write. So there's too many, yeah. right? Do you have anything to add to that, Hondo? Uh, I mean, not really. Just you know, real life. You always draw something from it. Every character right. we write, every character we write is partly us. Um, either that or they're total fabrication, and they don't feel so hot. But um, yeah, I mean. The first when I first jumped into the fray, I was I wrote Dan the Barbarian, and it was you know about this college kid who enters into it's like D and D and his world meld, and I just spent my entire childhood playing Dungeons and Dragons, so that was super easy mm -hmm. and a fun idea for me. And yeah, just you know each each book you you tap into something else from real life. Um, I've been married to the same woman forever, um, so I don't have uh, that experience of having had multiple you know, m multiple partners, but in terms of, you know, boxing or living off the land, uh, those things are very close to home. So keep working on her hondo. You might get her to accept it. <laughs> also, if you've no, I gotta get the, I gotta get the second woman to accept my dog, man. I'm fine. He's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> so there, 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 there was enough. a follow up to the toolbox versus their own character one. How do you balance power level between the, the harem members and the main character? Story dictates. That's yeah. yeah. This one gets interesting. I th I do think there's a small percentage that's pretty vocal that really wants the MC to be the most person, most powerful, or even the person with the only power. But then there's the opposite where there's um, I think Prax had that book where the the women are powerful and he just kind of, you know, he he's. It's sort of like a support role. The MC gets to play support mm -hmm. role, which is kind of cool too. It's just a different build, basically, for your party. Um, yeah, if you, anything that goes away from the main character being the the strongest person or the person where it has most of the time of possession, for is is dangerous. You better have a good reason for it, and you better be good at it. So, um, I think that it can be a better story that way if it's more balanced, for sure. It's just 
it's a risk. So you, you have to, you have to make sure you're doing it right. I mean, Daniel's great at that. Um, and I already mentioned dungeon walkers, but also Aether. I mean, you look at the Aether books and it's those, that's really the, the whole idea of supporting each other is, is really the main theme there for me. And, and I love it. And a lot of people love it. It's so, so refreshing. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't mess with Greg. I mean, he's super tough, you know, <laughs> right. but it's just right. that he doesn't, he doesn't have to strut. I mean, he's really about, he's genuinely about supporting these other women and honestly supporting anybody who's cool and believes Aether's coming back. But um, yeah, it's, if you're, if you, if you do step away from the main character being the baddest ass of all, it is a risk with our readership, especially, but I think anything in any type of fiction, honestly, I mean, Right. If you're gonna if you're gonna write thrillers, and you're gonna write about you know Jack Reacher, but he's stepping aside to let somebody else do the tough stuff, eh, I don't think readers are gonna like that. So it's a risk. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for joining us. Um, it was great to have you guys come here and talk for a little while and give us some more insight into the genre. Um, we will be continuing in Discord. I think Geneva will probably post a link. There were some questions asked if there's a link to the Discord. Looks like she, she did post one. one in comments. Um, if you are per, uh, participating in the code word giveaway, the code word for this panel is Facebook. So the code word is Facebook for this panel. Uh, we do ask that you put that phrase together and there will be a post made on where you can put that. Um, but come join us in the Discord and hang out for a little while. Uh, thanks, thanks again for everybody being here. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Ooh.